Providence, Rhode Island. Welcome to the Potterverse. It's a podcast dedicated to the book and film universe of Harry Potter. So grab your favorite wands and time turners. Let's step into the night and pursue that flighty temptress adventure. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. My name is Mary Larson. My name is Blake, and I'm in on Snape. I know you are, Blake. I'm so in on Snape. It's the best. He you, is the best. You, you want to know why? You dressed up as him multiple times, Oh, yeah. Too. I, I don't mess around. <laughs> you want to know why I'm in on Snape in this chapter? Oh, on this? Okay, so just this chapter alone. No, no, but I, I'm in overall. Like, overall, no matter what, I'm in on okay. Snape. But I'm in on this chapter because he's not wrong. No. You're not wrong. Not wrong at all. In fact, Right. Constantly. Yeah. Consistently right in this chapter. Yeah. And you have How many this... times is Snape right in the books? Always. <laughs> oh, you see what I did there? Boom, boom. Always. Oh, it took me a moment. Oh. Way to go, nerd reference. Nerd! There you go. Not bad. Uh, thank you, nerds. Thank you, nerds, for coming and uh, having fun with the Potterverse and listening to us and having a good time. Yeah, we're, we're nerds together. We're enjoying it. We're we having truly some fun. are. Yes, we are. So excited to be here and, of course, enjoying these moments with you. This, of course, we are delving into Chapter 14, Snape's Grudge. Mr. Prongs agrees with Mr. Mooney <laughs> and would like yes. to add that Professor Snape is an ugly git. <laughs> the best. That kind of magic is the best magic. Just sassy teenage magic that just wants to insult the heck out of you. And knows to properly address him by um, Professor, Professor Snape, yeah, not like, Severus or whatever, yeah. sniveling. Like, no, Professor Snape. It, the, the, Wonderful magic. The, the magic is well aware that professor, that Snape is a professor now yes. and that he has a long hook nose. And uh, it, it has like this own sense of agency, really, which is really, really cool magic. Agreed. Excellent stuff. Excellent. Well, before we delve into this chapter, we want to remind you. That if you enjoy the Potterverse, is it brings you Lumos in your time of Knox, we would love for you to become a member at jointhenerdclan.com. If one of you joining live right now, wouldn't mind typing that in, jointhenerdclan.com. It's your one-stop shop to support all things Mary and Blake. It helps us keep the podcast going, paying for uh, our studio and our website needs. Mm -hmm. um, and honestly, it just keeps the content going. And because of that, we reward you. We actually have extra book clubs. I'm doing the Bridgerton read-along inside of the jointhenerdclan.com. Blake is heading up the Outlander read-along. He's doing Voyager. That's right. And because we got so many members that joined the NerdClan.com, I actually started up a brand new blog series and a brand new podcast just called the MCU Diaries. And it is uh, cataloging all of the MCU shows on Disney+, Plus, beginning with WandaVision. It's all there. We are fully caught up. Even the latest podcast is all caught up right in time for tomorrow's finale of WandaVision, which I'm so excited. By the way, just as a quick aside, I know we're doing Potter tonight. Okay. They have announced that there's going to be a making of WandaVision documentary awesome. on the 12th. So guess what we are doing on the 12th? <laughs> okay. <laughs> all in. We are all in. So that, once again, it's your one-stop shop for all things of ways of supporting Mary and Blake. And we want to thank all of our friends. If you're a Nerd Clan member, write Nerd Clan in the comments because we want to shout you out. And if you're listening, high five. High five. Ready? I just gave you a high five. <laughs> You are such a dork. Yes, Blake, professionally. Oh, All right, my God, let's get into Marvin. the show. Oh, my goodness. I solemnly swear that I'm up to no good. <laughs> oh, man. You high five the mic. He's such a nerd. Here we go, guys. Chapter 14. We're well over halfway through in the book. Security is tightening inside all of Hogwarts, but especially Gryffindor Tower. You know who you don't want to be? Neville Longbottom. Nope. Or Sir Cadogan. Nope. No. <laughs> Hagrid has to go to London for Buckbeak's trial. It's so scary. And then uh, Ron and Harry go to Hogsmeade, and Harry kind of falls into this slick situation with Draco, and Draco sees his face, and Harry almost gets in trouble by Snape, and then he doesn't get in trouble, but... Snape finds the Marauder's map on him and is like, what is this? Lupin, come help me figure it out. And Lupin's like, I don't know what it is, but I'm not going to tell anybody. <laughs> the end. That's it. That's how it goes. 
End scene. All right. Let's start off just giving a moment. Maybe it should even be a different perspective at some point, but just giving a moment for Sir Cadogan and Neville. Rookie mistake. Rookie mistake. Rookie mistake sound effect going on oh, and off. Oh, man. Not now they have, fun. and so the, the fat lady is back, but she would not come back until she was given extra protection. So a bunch of surly security trolls had been hired to <laughs> guard her. Now, we've been told in previous books that trolls are incredibly dumb. Right, that they're just, I feel like they're club bouncers. Like, I think it's just their size that is intimidating. For example, my dad used to be a security officer, like an overnight security officer. He used to do it on like Friday or Saturday nights. Um, I remember it vividly growing up and he would just go. And I used to be like, dad, what would you do if if you actually found like a scary burglar? And he's like, I would just run away and call somebody else. (laughs) (laughs) You know what? Smart man. He is smart because I was like, it's not like you have a weapon. Like they just hire you there to like walk around the building once an hour. Just yep. just check to make sure that nothing burns down. That's a, that's his job. Yep. <laughs> well, that's pretty much what these trolls are. And then of course, uh, we we get the um, we know that the one eyed witch isn't boarded up. Now, this is really interesting. So like they've taken extra precautions. They're oh. just making sure that the entire school is taken care of, and yet nobody except Fred and George. Harry, Ron, and Hermione, and uh, the Marauders know about the secret passageway. How does how does Snape not know about this passageway? He like he gives it a glance, like he knows where it's coming from. He knows there's something going on, and right. how does he not figure it out? How does he not like bippity boppity boo it? I don't know. Part of me thinks that he just willingly says no. Like I, I'm not gonna. Like, I don't even want to get into this because it's yeah. going to be another can of worms. Right. Like, I just don't, I don't even, I don't even, like, I'm going to whistle past the graveyard on this one just because if I get down there, it's going to be a problem. And yeah. I'm going to have to fill out all the paperwork. And I don't want to fill out paperwork. I'm, I'm too busy busting <laughs> Potter's balls. No <laughs> paperwork. <laughs> <laughs> true. True. Smart. It's like, you know, when a cop pulls you over and he's, and he's like, oh, man. Yeah, I don't want to do this. I'm just about to get off duty. You yeah. know, like, I'm like, whatever. Just. Don't be a dink anymore. Yeah. You know, just get go the speed limit. All right, and, and and he goes home. I think that's what that, that's what Snape was doing. He knows what's happening. He's, okay, I don't feel like filling out the paperwork. Okay, just I can whatever. appreciate whatevs. <laughs> oh, look how it looks on Instagram. Almost, I need to like lean in. Yeah, I fixed it, Marvin. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll 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 get there. Listen, focus on the show. Don't focus okay. on Instagram. <laughs> He's still doing it. I'm trying to help people. People want to know about my Gryffindor sweatshirt. Oh, man. Ron, of course, is loving his moment in the spotlight. Instant celebrity, the book says. Oh, Instant course. celebrity. Instant. Reliving every single moment, just reveling in it, just owning his time, mm-hmm. reliving, you know, the curtains being open and well, there he the is with the time, knife. It's the first time that he that he is actually more popular than Harry. Yeah. And it's the first time he's more popular pretty much than anybody. He's always been Ron Weasley. Like, he's always been the afterthought because he's got 46,000 siblings and they're all running around and he's just the leftover. I wonder how awkward it is for Ron in the future books when he does have to... touching the mic. (laughs) It was a little low. When he, you know, interacts with Sirius in Uh the future. Like, does he ever, like, secretly tell him, like, listen, man... I have never been so scared in my life as the mo- until the moment that you were there. Like you actually are still my nightmare. Right. Good point. Yeah, you know, it's just like it's just like Hagrid. It's just like Hagrid chilling with Fudge, being all cool inside uh, the three broomsticks, having some <laughs> butter beer, even though Fudge just threw him in Azkaban the book right. before. <laughs> Don't you think Harry Ron? I mean, Ron in the future would still kind of have a little bit of shock from this. Maybe, maybe not. I mean, they get over it. They they make up, but. That would give me nightmares. I'm just saying. How about poor Neville? Poor Neville just wants to hang out with Harry. And Harry's just like, dude, no. it, like, it doesn't say anything. You feel bad for Neville. You feel bad for Neville. And then you remember that he gets his moment. Yeah, he gets a glow up. He get, <laughs> a, he gets a glow up. <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> but B, he gets his moment in the last book. So we're just, Neville right now, it... Neville is all of us who went through 
not only a few awkward years, but like all of the years were awkward. Yes. And then finally you're like... Every one of them were awkward. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) That's... For anyone else who went through that, you're like, okay, Neville's my person because I got you. And he just just wants to have a friend. I'll raise my hand on that one. I was that person that just went through awkward years. All of them. Because there's very few people. So there's five Gryffindor boys in this year, in the third year. So it's Harry, Ron, Dean, Seamus, and Neville. And Dean and Seamus are besties. They really should let six kids in each year. Having an odd number just means someone's going to be left out. Well, what if there isn't six kids to go in? What do you do? Just magic up a kid? I don't know. <laughs> Bump someone in? <laughs> but, like, obviously Neville's left out. You know that Dean and Seamus are going in, like, making fireworks. Yes. You know. That's you know what, what of course, that's what, that's what they're doing. Obviously. And then Harry, Ron are besties. And then there is Neville. And I think the left out person in the opposite, in the girls' dormitory, is Hermione. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And and that's why I feel so bad for Hermione in this chapter, even though I've kind of given her the business a little bit over the past few chapters. You you have. I've given her the business. And well, because she kind of deserves it. She kind of deserves it. And that's okay. And she kind of even deserves it a little bit in this chapter. Just for the way that she's handled things. She's like, I'm going to go tell. Blah, 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 the Mary, 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 Mary. Like, what are you doing? Yeah, no. But I do feel bad for Hermione because she it, it has been noted since book one. She just doesn't have many friends. And you're right, Mary. Ron and Harry have each other. So when things go awry, uh, the way that they have been, where Ron is just totally totally all over Hermione in this chapter. You feel bad a little bit because Hermione's got no, no one else to like oh, vent to. I mean, Hagrid leans Hagrid. into them. Yes. <laughs> Can we just, I mean, Hagrid is my favorite character of the series. Right. Absolutely. He just, he just is. I just can't, I feel bad for him for all the things that he's gone through. I still think that he should have been able to get his GED and a new wand. <laughs> I'm just blown away by this. And here's Hagrid, who has the wherewithal. Like he, he keeps an eye on Harry. He's been seeing Harry do all of his Quidditch stuff. Mm-hmm. And he is close enough with these boys that he's able to say, you guys are making a really big mistake. Right. You you would think that you'd put your friendship uh over a rat yes. and a couple of brooms. Yeah. And I love the scene where Hagrid, you know, he he is the the a professor for uh, all of the magical beasts and everything. And he has this great respect for all of the all of the animals as they are. And that is very evident in this chapter when he says a cat if Crookshanks did what a cat does. Mm-hmm. It's not Hermione's fault that the cat apparently ate Scabbis. Like, it's not her fault. And, oh, his fault, or whatever the cat is. I forget what. Is it a he? It's a he. Crookshanks right? is a he. Yeah, it's a he. It doesn't matter. It, it ain't Crookshanks' fault. It's not his fault. He's a cat. Cat's going to do what cat's going to do. Mm-hmm. It, it's it's a predator, man. It wants to, wants to eat some rats. And that rat is going to do what rats do, which is run away from cats. Well, and then I love his line where he, where, you know, Ron is saying, if she just get rid of that cat, I'd speak to her again. But she's sticking up for it. It's a maniac, and she won't hear a, a word against it. It's a maniac. <laughs> I could just see, see him saying I that. Know. Oh, it's great. And then Hagrid replies, ah, well, people can be a bit stupid about their pets. <laughs> and I loved this because, you know, just case in point, what he's dealing with with Buckbeak. And obviously, we've known Hagrid to have the dragon, that, that yeah, whole scenario. Right. Uh, he had the... The three-headed dog, um, you know, fluffy situation. So for Hagrid to say that, it probably just made Harry and Ron, who understand Hagrid, mm-hmm. you know, they just say like, okay, Hagrid loves his pets, but they couldn't do that for Hermione. I yeah. mean, I'll be real. I would be upset too if I thought somebody's pet ate my pet and never said sorry. I would, once well, again. But it ain't her fault. It's not. It's not her fault. She should say, I'm sorry for the death of your pet. Why? A cat's going to do what a cat's going to do. When you have all these animals running around, he, Ron's lucky that Hedwig didn't snatch up scabbies. If my cat ate somebody's pet, I would really feel bad. If someone's dog bites someone else's dog, yep. you feel bad. You say you're sorry. You Not take me. care of it. Dogs well, do what dogs are going to do. No. People get in trouble. They get like sued. You have to pay for medical bills. We'll figure it out. We'll fight it out in court. I ain't saying sorry. 
Judge Judy. King stays king. Jerry Seinfeld is now a judge. Did Jerry you know Seinfeld's not a judge. Judge Jerry, Google it. Judge Jerry Springer. Oh. Not Jerry Seinfeld. <laughs> That's what I meant. That's what I meant. <laughs> Jerry Seinfeld. <laughs> that would be amazing. What's the deal with your cat? <laughs> Why is he eating a rat? <laughs> Can you imagine Jerry Seinfeld being the judge at Buck Beats event? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. You're welcome, Blake. Oh, yeah. Yada, 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 you're guilty. <laughs> that was Buck Beats sentencing. <laughs> Don't die. You just had a birthday. Oh, that's the new shirt. That's the buck beak and yada yada yada. You're guilty. There you go. That's it. That's how we. That's how we do. So the boys oh, have this moment man. where Hagrid lays it on down for them, <sighs> saying, "You need to be better friends. Please be nice to Hermione. She's just looking out for you." And they go up to the oh. castle, and what's the first thing? The first person they run into, Hermione, who says, yeah. "I'm going to get you in trouble again. <laughs> if you go to Hogsmeade, I'm going to have to tell again. Oh. I'm going to have to tell them about the map and how yeah. you've been sneaking in." And this is why she kind of deserves it because, okay, listen, if you wanted to make a case, if you wanted to make the case, right, that like, okay, Hermione is just looking out for. Ron and especially Harry about the broom because there was this other thing that happened with the diary and like we don't know where this came from and like there could be like all right all right yeah I kind of get it but this the 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 passageway and the map come on, now you're just a fun sucker no she doesn't want him to die no I mean, fun sucker Sirius Black made his way somehow into Hogwarts had a knife standing over. Ron's bed. Had he been at the other bed, right to his left, he would have been able to slash Harry in Hermione's mind. Sure. Still a fun sucker. So You don't ruin a man's good time. You know what's interesting, though, is she has this, and she's like, Harry, if you go to her, her hugs me again, I'm going to tell Professor McGonagall about that map. And then there's Ron. Can you hear someone talking, Harry? Growled Ron, not looking at Hermione. <laughs> Harry does not acknowledge Hermione at all. Right. They, Ron and Hermione have this back and forth. Like, boop, boop, boop. And Harry's like, wow, you're trying to get her expelled. And Hermione, you know, tries to do a little something and Crookshakes comes and, you know, ruins the moment. So Harry and Ron just, like, walk away. But Harry, I love that Harry just avoids conflict by not talking. We actually, our little lad has one particular student in his class who he's a wee bit prickly with. Uh, pr and we ain't the word. No, it is just a wee. It's not yeah. like last year. Last year was bad. Last year was... This year, it's just prickly. And I told him, I was like, buddy, just be like Harry. Just ignore. Just, you know, just don't... Just pretend you're Harry with Malfoy. Sure. He generally doesn't fight back. He generally just, you know, walks away. And even here, he just walks away. Oh, the invisibility cloak. R.I.P. Oh, in this chapter, I know it gets stuck in the uh, in the he leaves it in the corridor. Doesn't so I, he? I'm trying to picture it. So he had it over his head. He goes into you know Honey Dukes, gets to see it all, gets to the, go to the post office yes. and everything. I loved how Ron's pretending to see how much it costs to get an owl to fly over to Egypt, and then they go up, you know, um, towards the the shrieking shack, and they're looking and they're near the snowy area, and this is where they run into. You gotta Listen, stop keeps, with the mic. Then make then fix my mic. <laughs> I'm not this small. All, all Do you I, see me? I look like Bethilda Bagshot, hunched over. All I hear is... Yeah, maybe if... Fine. Good luck editing this sound, right? <laughs> this is where I want to sit. Hold on, let me, let me see if I This is where I wish I could be. Hold on. <laughs> For those of you listening on the podcast, I apologize. There we go. Oh, there we go. Yeah, well, see, there you go. I mean... Don't touch it now. Okay. <laughs> this is natural. Thank you. <laughs> there oh, we go. There we go. More Look, better. Oh, more am better. I sitting normally. Ooh la la. I right, don't touch the mic no more. Not touch it. I don't need to. It's not <laughs> slinking. So Harry has the invisibility cloak over him, which I picture like a sheet. Yes. And he's just <clears throat> mudslinging left and right. Yes. Which mudslingers are a real creature. Is it really? Yeah, I learned about him in Octonauts. Really. Yeah. Oh, Octonauts are great, they man. Really they are. teach you all the great stuff. Um, 
I still think they're real. Or did I just make that up in my mind? Mm. You know what, just in case? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and he's throwing mud. And while this happens, uh, the, the sheet, the invisibility cloak comes off just a little bit. And a he floating has head. a floating head. And Malfoy knows right away. Malfoy knows right away. And I, I didn't know why Harry... It's probably because of the Dementors, actually. I was wondering, like, if Malfoy can beat Harry back to Hogwarts, yes. because Harry has to get into Honeydukes and then do this whole tunnel. Yeah, and Malfoy can just run in the road. Like, why couldn't Harry just run in the road with the invisibility cloak and just follow Malfoy? Because how is he going to get into the school without being he's noticed? He's invisible. Yeah, but he's going to have to open a door. No, People... but he just follows right behind Malfoy. But what if he doesn't make it in time? He would just follow Malfoy. But what if he doesn't make it in time for whatever reason? Let's say he trips and falls. Then he's in trouble. You see? There you go. That's why you got to go, you, you go through the, the passageway. But I was wondering, can the Dementors, I think, doesn't Lupin, doesn't someone say like they can sense you even if you're, or is it Dumbledore? I think it's yeah, Dumbledore. Yeah, Dumbledore says it doesn't matter even if you have a disguise or okay. whatever. There you go. Yes. So, yes. yep. All right. That's how it goes. So he has to go this way because he will not be with can the Dementors. Can you imagine being Malfoy just seeing you know, a floating head? Like, oh my God. Rather than think, this is scary. There are ghosts here. There's stuff. Yeah. He's like, no, I know what to do. Yeah, exactly. And he books it. Like, this guy has had it out for, for Potter so much that he knows exactly what to do. I need to go tell Snape because Harry Potter is not supposed to be out. Like, think about that. He pays that much attention to Harry. Mm-hmm. That he's realized that Harry didn't get to go out on the first trip. Yep. He knows enough, A, that Harry wasn't able to, and B, probably knows probably Harry shouldn't be out because of Sirius Black. But like, who pays that much attention to another kid? Well, Malfoy does because exactly. he's a Slytherin and he wants to get Harry. He wants to give Harry the business the way I've been giving Hermione the business for the past few Don't chapters. Stop. You've got to lay off if I'm serious. I know. I'm laying off. I, I got no problem. I'm just saying he wants to give Harry the business. He mm-hmm. wants to get him in trouble. And. By all accounts, he does. I mean, Snape is right there when Harry comes out and his hands are all muddy and he sees everything. I love the whole encounter. I'll let you read, Blake. I know it's your Mary, favorite thing. It's my favorite thing to These do in this podcast. Things. I love this. I just, I, oh, it's the best. Sit, said Snape. Harry sat. Snape, however, Remain standing. Mr. Malfoy has just seen me with a has been to see me with a strange story, Potter. I like how, by the way, that Snape addresses both uh, Draco and Harry. He calls Draco Mr. Malfoy, and uh, Harry just is referred to as Potter. Good, nice. Yeah, you like that? Huh? Listen, I didn't go to college to get stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Harry didn't say anything. He tells me that he was up in the shrieking shack when he ran into Weasley, apparently alone. Still, Harry. Apparently. Harry didn't speak. Mr. Malfoy states that he was standing and talking to Weasley when a large amount of mud hit him on the back of the head. How, how do you think that could have happened? Hmm. Harry tried to look mildly surprised. I don't know, Professor. Snape's eyes were boring into Harry's. It was exactly like trying to stare out at a hippogriff. Harry tried hard not to blink. I also like that comparison Occlumency. too. Uh, yeah, right? Oh, is he uh, doing uh, Occlumency? Oh, yeah. Legilimens. Come on, let's get that right now. Uh, Got to get the branding I always, right. I always flip it. I know you do. Uh, but I like it. I like how he's like staring into him and he's staring into Harry. Or I'm sorry. Harry is staring into Snape like Snape is a hippogriff. Like he's trying to give respect, but also like mm-hmm. trying not to... Trying to blink, trying not to yeah. wince, or you know, because what if you do, the hippogriff's all over you. Forget it. The game's game's over. Yep. You're out. Um, what? <laughs> Just you being so cute, comparing Snape to a hippogriff. Mister Malfoy then saw an extraordinary apparition. Can you imagine what that might have been, Potter? Hmm. No, said Harry. Now trying to sound innocently curious. It was your head, Potter, <laughs> floating. In (laughs) mid-air, there was a long silence. Maybe he'd better go to Madame Pomfrey, said Harry, if he's seeing things like, what do you think your head would have been doing in Hogsmeade, Potter, said Snape softly. Your head is not allowed in Hogsmeade. No part of your body is permission to be in Hogsmeade. I know that, said Harry, striving to keep his face free of guilt or fear. It sounds like Malfoy's having hallucinations. 
Malfoy is not having hallucinations, <laughs> snarled Snape. And he bent down, a hand on each arm of Harry's chair, so that their faces were a foot apart. You look into those eyes, baby. If your head was in Hogsmeade, so was the rest of you. Oh. I, oh my goodness gracious. It's just so great. It's just, it, because he's right. Mm-hmm. And the, uh, I could just feel Alan Rickman in this scene, just mm-hmm. the way that he kind of like slithers along yes. stuff and he gets that close and just <laughs> makes you really wish that like every single little bit of these books was able to go on screen because you just want to have all these moments. And there's this great, um, there's this great, uh, because this is very different than the movie in the movie. Harry's walking around at night right, and right. you know, and there's a great comparison here um, and a great mirroring between Snape and Lupin. And it, it starts right here. So, he said, straightening up again, everyone for the Minister of Magic downwards has been trying to keep famous Harry Potter safe from Sirius Black. But famous Harry Potter is a law unto himself. Let the ordinary people worry about his safety. Famous Harry Potter goes where he wants to with no thought for the consequences. Oh, because, and I like, I love this because they keep drawing we comparisons. We could tell you love it. They keep drawing comparisons between Lupin and Snape throughout this entire book. Snape is right. The, for the most part, the entire, except when he, like he's really picking on Neville for the sake of picking on Neville. Um, but Snape brings up the same exact points that Lupin does later on in this chapter. It's just that Harry listens to Lupin because he was friends with his dad. It's like when I told you, you should probably eat vegetables. And you were like, no, they don't taste good. And then some like lady said you should eat vegetables. And you're like, did you know that vegetables are good for you? <laughs> There's always this great scene. I always think back to this. And I don't know why. I even think about it when I think of you, too. Oh. When there, in the movie Father of the Bride, okay. there there is a moment where... Um, Steve Martin's daughter, who's getting married. The bride. The bride. She is about to go outside, and he's like, hey, you know, uh, I forget her name now. It's like Janie or whatever the heck her name is, I forget. Mm-hmm. And he says, oh, you know, it's really cold out. You should you should bring a coat. And she's like, no, I'm fine, blah, 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 blah. And then the the, the fiancé comes by. He says, oh, hey, Janie, you know, it's really cold. You should get a coat. Oh, really? You think so? Thanks. And she puts the coat on right mm-hmm. away, right in front of Steve Martin. And I feel like that's exactly what happens, and sometimes you do that to me. But the other way around. You don't listen to me. You listen you don't to other listen people. To me either. That's I listen fine. to you all the time. Not really. All the t- Annie. Thank you, Elizabeth. It's a- it's Annie. I it's forgot okay. about that. Listen, we're married. This is what happens. And that's true. You don't listen to nothing I say. It's it's okay. It no, happens. I do sometimes. Um, when it's what I agree with. <laughs> <laughs> How extraordinarily like your father you are, Potter. Snape said suddenly, his eyes glinting. He too was exceedingly arrogant. A small amount of talent on the Quidditch pitch made him think he was a cut above the rest of us too, strutting around the place with his friends and admirers. The resemblance between you is uncanny. My dad didn't strut. Oh, yes. Edge Harry. This is ice skate edge Harry Mm -hmm. right here, Mm -hmm. said Harry before he could stop himself. And nor do I. Your father didn't set much store by rules either. Snape went on, passing his, pressing his advantage, his thin face full of malice. Rules were for lesser mortals, not Quidditch Cup winners. His head was swollen. Shut up! Harry was suddenly on his feet. Rage such as he had not felt since he last, since his last night in Privet Drive was thundering through him. He didn't care that Snape's face had gone rigid. The black eyes flashing dangerously. What did you say to me, Potter? I told you to shut up about my dad, Harry yelled. I know the truth, all right. He saved your life. Dumbledore told <laughs> Dumbledore told me that. Boom! <laughs> you wouldn't even be here if it weren't for my dad. Picture this 13-year-old. Mm-hmm. Harry? <clears throat> Harry Potter. Oh, yeah, sorry. Hold on. I, you're, you are 100% right. Let me, let me get that for you. I'm Harry freaking Potter. This is his moment right now. He he got his courage. He got his bravery. He's like, oh no, you just push the oh no, oh no, <laughs> oh, oh no, 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 no,
You've gone too far, man, and I'm just going to lay it all out. And guess what? My fact checker, Dumbledore. <laughs> Dumbledore told me. <laughs> like, With a little like asterisk a, footnote. I feel like that's a Boston kid thing to do. Dumbledore told me that you would have died if it wasn't for my father. Get get out of here, guy. Hashtag truth. <laughs> Uh, don't make me get Hermione and Ron. They'll tell you too. <laughs> How do you like them apples? We get to see the flu powder situation. Uh, hold on, I'm not oh, done yet. Just, oh, okay, I didn't I'm know. I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet. Uh, it, it, let me savor this this Snape mm. glory. I would hate you to run away with a false idea of your father, Potter. He said, a terrible grin twisting his face. Oh. Have you been imagining some act of glorious heroism? Then let me correct you. Your saintly father and his friends played a highly amusing joke on me that would have resulted in my death if your father hadn't gotten cold feet at the last moment. There was nothing brave about what he did. He was saving his own skin as much as mine. Had their joke succeeded, he would have been expelled from Hogwarts. Oh, my God. Great stuff. Great, 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 great. Agreed. And it's great because Harry, this is a, a, a stark contrast to the level of expectation that Harry has had for his father mm-hmm. uh, ever since hearing his dad's voice in his dream. Oh, uh, it wasn't a dream. It was the Dementor. Uh, yeah, sorry. The, uh, but that's what I meant. Yeah. The Dementor-induced uh, haze, yes. Yes. if you will. Uh, this... <sighs> This takes Harry down a notch, uh, and it brings reality back to the situation. Because again, Snape's not wrong. It's just that Harry doesn't want to believe him and doesn't want to take any consideration to Snape's perspective. Just like he's done the entire time while at Hogwarts, even though Snape has gone out on the line and saved his his keista. A number of different times. They should have just taken a step back. They needed a class on like interpersonal skills. Like, why don't you try to see things from another person's perspective? Why don't you try to understand the things that people have gone through? Mm-hmm. This would have made things a lot easier. Um, the Can we get to the flu powder. Yeah, go to the flu powder. Sorry. So Snape like picks up the flu powder dust, tosses it. You're not like into this because I was so into this. No, it was I'm into pretty it. much like us dropping in on our kids on Alexa. <laughs> That's true. Alexa, drop in on kitchen. <laughs> Are you doing your homework? No. Okay, I'm coming down. <laughs> so he like flu powders, like Lupin, get in here. We need to talk. And in comes Lupin, who puts on the best like fake face oh, to protect yeah. the day. Yep, absolutely. Oh, we also <laughs> we also had Ron. Poor little Ron running on in, trying to say, like, I gave Harry that stuff in Zonko's ages, ages ago. (laughs) What a solid friend. Like, running into Snape's office of all places. Like, I'm going to cover for my buddy. I'm going to do this. Here's the question I have for you, sweetheart. That is, does Snape know that it's Lupin? No. I don't know. I don't know. The textual evidence would suggest that he does because he looks at Lupin with this look um, when he's like, don't you think he would go straight to the manufacturers? Did he get it from the, straight from the manufacturers? Like, I know. Like, how does Snape not know the nickname Wormtail? And like, he knows Wormtail, mm-hmm. the nickname. He knows the nickname... He he. Ha- if he knows Wormtail, he has to know um, Loop. He has to know Padfoot. Why do you Prongs think- and Mooney has to? Why do you think he knows Wormtail's nickname? Because later on, he refers to Peter Pettigrew as Wormtail. Maybe he tells him, like, "Listen, man, this is my this is my like hood rat name." <laughs> Get it? Get it? I do. Oh, you know what? Bam! Just like that. (laughs) (laughs) My hood rat name. (laughs) You just made the... Are you okay? You just made the geekiest joke 
ever. But I don't even think other people know it. Uh, I don't think they know the hood rat. No, but I don't know how people don't video. know that. Are you telling me that... That video is classic. Oh, the video is great. Like doing hood rat things. Yeah, um, yeah. How... Are you telling me that these pack of four kids are running around school at that time and they and nobody knows their nicknames that they use for each other? It's a top secret, double secret probation name? Like, there's no way. that People have to know these names. Snape hasn't seen... Like, okay. This was a Gryffindor code names right here, okay? Yes. This is Gryffindor code names. Peter Pettigrew... Gryffindor code name, fun time, secret double agent that people didn't know about. Snape didn't know that Peter Pettigrew was a secret double agent. Peter Pettigrew and Snape were not friends. Yeah, right, but I'm saying... Then Peter Pettigrew is dead. Yes. So in no way, shape, or form could Peter Pettigrew, who's been a rat all this time, have crept into Snape's office and been like, Psst, buddy, it's me. It's Peter Pettigrew. But I go by Wormtail now. I don't know. But really, I go by Scabbers now. I don't know. I, I the, the, he doesn't know who who Wormtail is until what? he comes out and he it rejoins the Dark Lord and he says, "This is my hood rat name." I don't know. Let me just read you the passage. Lupin looked up and, by the merest half glance in Harry's direction, warned him not to interrupt. Full of dark magic, he repeated mildly. Do you really think so, Severus? It looks to me as though it's merely a piece of parchment that insults anybody who tries to read it. Childish, but surely not dangerous. I imagine it got it from a joke shop. Indeed, said Snape. His jaw had gone rigid with anger. You think a joke shop could supply him with such a thing? You don't think it more likely that he got it directly from the manufacturers? And the way that it's written here, it's italicized. That when, That is with purpose. It is with intent. When you italicize something like that, it's like emboldening it. It's like putting a giant exclamation point with underline in it. There is intent here. It's like saying, "Okay, so if he Mary, does, are you telling me you're not a Gryffindor?" So if he, okay, so if you're gonna take this stance, if you're gonna take this stance, which I can appreciate, because I don't think it's ever really clarified. I no, it's not, and that's why. But then he's gonna know Padfoot, and the manufacturers. He could be thinking as Sirius Black. That's true. Rather than like Lupin, like Lupin, you're a manufacturer. If if we're supposed to read into this, I think he's saying, Lupin, don't you think like he could have randomly gotten this from the manufacturer? Like maybe Snape has enough respect and trust in Lupin mm -hmm. and Lupin has come out saying, listen, I want nothing to do with Sirius Black. He killed my best friends, whatever. Mm -hmm. Maybe, yeah, maybe this is his way of telling Lupin this is you and your jabronis. Right, that's who what wrote I'm saying. This. Don't you think Sirius Black? I think if you wanted to go that route. Uh, Angela on Facebook is asking, who is the manufacturer? This confuses me. Um, Spoiler world for people who are brand new. It is Harry Potter's dad, Lupin, Sirius Black, and Peter Pettigrew, who um, are... They are Macers, the, the Wormtail, Marauders. Mooney, Lu uh, Padfoot, and Prongs. And those, they're, they're nicknames for each James and uh, Remus and Sirius and Peter. Those are the, the nicknames. Uh, so I, I don't know. I just, I feel like there's <laughs> implicit also in Lupin's reaction to Harry is I'm, I'm not well. It, 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 that's not implicit. It's it's direct. I'm not covering up for you anymore, Harry. Like you can't be an idiot. And I think Re Remus knows that Snape knows that he is the one who, and he and his buddies made this map because of the nicknames showed up. Okay. And listen, I, I'm, he doesn't want to say it to Harry, but I'm the one who made this thing. It somehow ended up in your hands. I don't know how you got it, but you did. And I know for a fact. That it was in what's his name's office, um, Filch. Filch's office. But you got your hands on it. So what are we doing? What are we doing here? You can't be doing this. And I feel like Lupin is telling him without saying it directly. I covered up for you. Don't make me look like an idiot again. Okay. That's what I'm thinking. So that's that. All uh, right. Anything else you want to say about this chapter, my darling? No, I think that's about it. I, you know, one last thing I would say 
is you're you're getting a sense of the group. You're getting a sense of the uh, of Wormtail and and Padfoot and Prongs and and Mooney, and because we know now that Lupin was Mooney, and the way that he just reacts so smoothly to to Snape and gives Harry this quick glance that tells you a lot about him. It, 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 you know how we've talked about how Hermione and Ron and Harry each have roles in their mm-hmm. friendship? Uh, I feel like Lupin's role oh, yeah. is one of being the story guy. Mm. And because he has to cover himself up so much for being a werewolf, he's so quick and easy to just be able to maneuver and have these stories or cover up. He has up a good or, poker face. He's got a yeah, poker okay. face. It, he's got a good poker face. Okay. So, so that's that. All right. Anything else? That's it. All right. Uh, we do not have... Oh, we Actually, we have a uh, different perspective. Yes, it's we do. your turn. Yeah. It's your turn. You got one? I mean, isn't it always? Um, yes. Yes, it is. Pretty much, for the <laughs> okay. most part. I had last week. You yeah. didn't like that one either. So that's just your turn now. <laughs> Holy cricket, you're Harry Potter. I'm Hermione Granger, and you are... Remus Lupin. Oh, Remus, what's up, buddy? You're Snape. I'm Snape? Yeah. Lupin, you suck. No, no, that's not how this works. <laughs> what are you doing? We're in the teacher's lounge, Hey, Snape. Lupin, come over here. I, I got this map. No, okay, this is my turn. <laughs> you We're told at, me I'm, I'm Snape. Set, I'm setting the scene. Okay. We're in the teacher's lounge. Okay. okay having having Leonard. I'm having little, dinner. Okay. Little lunch dinner. Am I like? Am I like a sausage and chips guy, or no. what? Am I like a salad guy? I think you're like a soup guy. I think you slurp. <laughs> Slurping snivelous. Anyway. Slurping snivelous. So I'm gonna come on over with my fillet. With your fillet. Yeah. Well, you have your soup. Rare. Yes. Remus gets a rare fillet. Um, Severus, I just want to clarify something. What, Lupin? I honestly have no idea how Potter got that part. Yeah, okay, yeah, it's got your name on it. You know, you know, I wouldn't want anything like that to be in Harry Potter's hands. Sure, you and your buddies basically you, killed okay, me. Okay, never mind. We can't do different perspectives together. Why not? You told me because to be Snape. I'm being Snape. I know, but I just don't. I think Snape and Lupin actually have a much better relationship than you're leading it out to be. Oh, okay, fine. I, no, I, no, 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 no. Go ahead. I'm done. You don't, you don't want. Done. You don't I've want... lost my momentum. But no. what it, all I wanted to say is, I feel okay. like because Lupin has been so open to Snape about his condition that he's a werewolf, and Snape is brewing this highly difficult potion for him, mm-hmm. I feel like they have this really mutual understanding, and they both mourn James and Lily. <laughs> So I don't think that Snape would be like, what are you doing giving him this map, you little liar? I think he too. I think they would have like a little moment in the teacher's lounge where they'd say, whoa, that was crazy, man. Harry Potter, you just, he does hood rat stuff. <laughs> the end. <laughs> like that little worm tail doing hood rat stuff. I know his hood rat name. No, they didn't think he did hood rat stuff because they felt bad for him. They think he's dead. Yeah, whatevs. This, of course, is the time that if you have any questions, if you're watching us live, we would love for you to post the questions preceding it with a lightning bolt emoji. Um, So please feel free to post those now. This is the moment. And McKenna on Instagram says, in the order of the Phoenix film, when Snape is training Harry to not let Voldemort into his mind, Harry sees one of Snape as old memories where James refers to Lupin in front of Snape. Okay, it cut off, but... And they're praying. Um, Maybe they're saying their nicknames there. Lily Jenkins on YouTube says, what would be Snape's nickname if he was part of the Marauders? We didn't play our sound. We didn't play the sounder. Oh, Miles Hager. Okay, go ahead. Now you can. Lily Jenkins says, (laughs) what would be Snape's nickname if he was part of the Marauders? Greasy. Okay, yeah. If he's part of the Marauders. Greasy. No, they were nicknaming him Snivellus. Yeah, but that was so, that well, was like. But I don't think they would like. I think these are names that they chose for themselves. Like he wouldn't want to be called Greasy. Well, a nickname you can't give yourself a nickname. It's it's, it's against he the rules. You wouldn't stick with that. And when you give nicknames to to your friends, there there are no sacred cows. There are none. It doesn't matter. Like your worst thing about you will become your nickname. That's how it's supposed to go. Especially with the guys. Guys being dudes give each other weird nicknames. It's how it's how it is. 
Like my what my sophomore year, we had uh, a kid that had to room with us. Uh, that was a freshman. His nickname oh we called gosh. him Meat. We need to stop saying hood rat. I just googled it. Okay. It does not mean what we think it means. Okay, sure, whatevs. Hood rap. Hood rat is a witch. Switch out W a uh-huh. B with no class, but quick to give up on sass. Take away the S. <laughs> Okay, Noun, sure. sling, someone who has, <clears throat> you know, does the deed with everyone in the hood or neighborhood. Oh, okay. That is not what we meant. We don't mean that. No. We mean it from the movie. I mean, from the, from the video <laughs> on YouTube. It's a YouTube clip of this little yeah. kid who's like, Doing hood rat I stuff. ran away from my grandma and took a car. He's like four, because I want to go hood, do hood rat stuff and smoke cigarettes with my friends. And he's like, four. Yeah. <laughs> he's like so young. Oh, we have to find the video. But never mind. We will stop saying hood rat because we don't want that on a t-shirt. Okay. No one wants to walk around. Uh, all that. right. Um... Let's see what we got here. Go down. That's where they are. I know. I'm just making sure. Uh, okay. Allison says, uh, pretty sure Snape re- re- uh, resents the heck out of Lupin for having to brew him the potion at all the time. I don't think there's anything but animosity on Snape's part from Allison on Facebook. Marvin, thoughts? See, I kind of feel like Snape likes having the power. Like, mm, good one. A, I'm the best potion brewer. Like, I am the potions master. Mm-hmm. I can do this. And it's not every day that I get to brew a potion that actually has good use. I mean, I'm sticking, out, I'm hanging out with little kids all the time. So I kind of like that that Lupin owes me. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I don't know. I think it's kind of cool. Angela asks, how did Ron know exactly what happened to tell the same story with Huffing and the Puffing? Just a minute before Harry was worried he wouldn't be able to get to Ron, first tell him the cover story. He came in and said exactly what Harry said. I think because Harry Ron had brought Harry things from Honey Dukes and Hogsmeade last yes, time, yes. that he just probably thought this is what Harry will say, because yep. his previous items were from me. Caitlin asks, do we ever find out what the prank is? The prank that um, James pulls on Snape. I think so. I don't remember what it is off the top of my Mm -hmm. head. Uh, Let's see here. (laughs) Jolene says, with that definition, that's a very different Peter Pettigrew. Yes. (laughs) Not a hood wrap. So we will not be making that shirt. Oh, that is funny. No, you don't need like your family Googling that. No, what was the shirt that I was supposed to make? You're going to make a Peter Pettigrew Hood rat shirt. Don't no, do no, that. it wasn't. It was going to be something else. Okay. I, it, it was going to be something else. I well, forget I now. It's not that. I forget what it is now. Victoria asks, do you think Snape got the kids to study werewolves to help them out or to help or, or to out Lupin? To out Lupin. I think they, it's a little bit of both. It wasn't even in. You think it was to help them? Yeah. In case. In case Lupin eats them. Well, in, in case in, in case something you know bad happens, they're gonna have some knowledge of what they're facing, and it's better to to arm them with a little bit more knowledge than nothing, and just that past teacher's that room graveyard. conversation must have been weird. Lupin coming back, being like, "So Severus, um, the students told me that they didn't." They weren't stuff studying what Huffy Pinks or something like that. That they were actually starting the werewolf chapter. Yeah, is everything all right? <laughs> well, I just want them to be prepared. Uh, Lily says it was the Jerry Fe- Seinfeld shirt. Thank you, thank, thank you. you. That's what a yada yada yada. You're guilty. All right. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think that's it. I think that's all we got here. Oh, uh, Suzanne says which character goes with each nickname? I am confused. Mooney. Mooney is Lupin. Lupin. Uh, Prongs is, is James, James because of his Patronus and the stag. Yeah, uh, Padfoot is Sirius. Yeah. Oh, oh <laughs> goodness gracious. Uh, Padfoot is uh, Sirius because he is the black dog. And Wormtail, he is a little rat worm. That's what he is because he's the, uh, that's Peter Pettigrew because he's a rat and he's Wormtail. That are that is the nicknames and that is how they coincide with each character. So that is that. I just love the Marauders map is the best. It's such great magic and it is f- like it's useful magic. And Mary has her own copy of the Marauders map in our studio. If you're watching it live, you can see the whole thing. I got it for her. As a matter of fact, I got it for her out of. 
an airline magazine years and years and years ago. Back when that was like a thing. When it was a thing, it was like it, it was like the Sky Mall. That's what it was. It was the Sky Mall, and I got it out of there for her. And the thing's awesome. It has all these little fold outs and everything. It's the best. It's such a good copy. It's not like them cheap copies you get from Target now. You know? It's not like those. No, no. I think the whole thing is great. I love that thing. Um, Sky Mall at its f- finest. Well, I think that yeah, wraps I think that's it. it. That wraps it up. That Yay! Wraps it up. I oh, I'm love so this glad chapter. you're having. Yeah, I could. I can tell, Blake. Love this you chapter. have been very, very enthusiastic. So let's close out the show. Let's do it. Thank you all so very much for hanging out with us and delving into. Um, you know, the Prisoner of Azkaban again. We're going to be here same time, same place next week, Thursday, 8.15 p.m. So if you're listening on the podcast, we would love for you to join us. We do have a complimentary texting reminder service. So just in case plans change and our kids don't sleep or if something happens. Which happens all the time. Exactly. <laughs> so you're going to want to get on our complimentary texting service. I'm going to ask my friends who are live right now to help to help put this in. You're going to text the phone number 81010. If you've never done this before and you're like, why? It has only five numbers. It's totally okay. If you're in the U.S., text the phone number 81010 and in the message field you're going to put the at symbol and then elder wand yes that's it that's it that's all you got to do just like one word elder wand in yep. the message field and you hit send and you will be automatically added to my free complimentary texting service if you live outside the US you can go to remind.com slash join slash elder wand and of course I want to remind you like that transition right there I want to remind you to go to marionblake.com check out the brand new podcast that we have for WandaVision and all the future MCU shows on Disney Plus it's called the MCU Diaries and I'm hosting it Awesome. My name's Mary. My name is Blake. Mischief Managed. Still touching the mic. Still touching the mic. <laughs> <laughs>